What's up everybody, welcome back to Studio Reef. This is part two of building my own reef controller. Um, today we're gonna be adding some more bells and whistles to the system here and um, what I'm gonna do is a basic overflow precaution. So I bought a float switch and at this point I'm checking to see if the float switch is normally closed or normally open and the one I have is normally closed. So I'll have to invert this later on in the system but for now I'm gonna just uh, get rid of this old power supply and use the cable for signaling and I'm just gonna solder this down and make it nice and neat and waterproof. So there we go. Now I need to drill a hole through this old DVD cover and the reason I went with the DVD cover is because when I measured my overflow box back in the day when I built the tank, I actually used a DVD cover for the spacing of the glass so I know that this will fit exactly on top of it uh, so I can just nudge it in. And on the floor there you see I have a suction cup that I'm gonna put on the glass behind it just to make sure that it stays in place. So yeah, like I said, I could just notch that in there and it stays very tightly in place. So uh, now you start to get the picture of what I'm actually trying to build here because one of my biggest fears is just one day coming down and seeing all the sump water pumped over the tank and you get the picture. So what we see here is the black cable coming in with the signal. I put that on one and two because it is an input signal. So. Moving on to the logical diagram, you see that I put in an inverter from below the signal that goes to the output. And the reason I did this is because it's a normally closed switch and I need the signal to be normally open. So moving on to the second relay, I have my return pump set up and I can define a formal. And when I flick the switch, I can actually see that it goes from false to true and false to true. So I have a good connection here and things are looking really nice. So Moving on, I have just built this up a bit with an AND and that means that I can also overrule it from my phone. So when I take the phone and take the area, return pump, and take it off, I can actually see that it goes from true to false and that means the output is off. So now I can try and actually see what happens when I take this into reality. <laughs> So my, my hands were shaking a bit guys, I was really doing this for the first time just shooting as I was going along, so no pre-testing was done. I took my return pump from skims and put it at maximum speed and that means that usually I would have a, a complete overflow situation with water on my floor. So speeding this up a bit, uh, you guys can see what happened. So yeah, I would call that a success. So with my Android uh, tablet here, I'm just gonna show you the setup of what the controlling part looks like. And that is basically just set up to go from on to off and I can oversteer whatever time profile is running or I could uh, change the time profile. But in this case, I'm just showing you that I can control it wirelessly and I could do this, of course, from anywhere in the world. So mom, how you Yes, so man. 